If you need a quick and easy ELA review game, then this video is for you. I want you to think of this game like taboo, but for ELA. We like to call it reading rhombus here at EV Academics. It's super easy to set up and your students will be highly engaged throughout the activity. I also wanna note that this video is video number four of a four part series that we're hosting on the channel all about engaging lessons you can use with your students at any time of the year. And if you haven't already watched our other videos, go back and check them out for fun ideas for research projects, writing assignments, and even a genius hour project that I walk you through. Now, before we get started, be sure to hit subscribe where you're watching this video for more videos like this one. And if you found this video helpful, please share it with your fellow middle school ELA teacher friends. All right, let's dive in. To play Reading Rhombus, AKA Taboo for ELA, you'll wanna split your class into two different teams. Give each team time to come up with about 20 to 30 different words, titles, phrases, etc., that relate to concepts that you guys learned in ELA this year. So for example, a team might come up with verbals because that was a grammar concept that they learned or they might come up with Esperanza Rising because that was a class novel that they read. Or they might come up with the poem I Too by Langston Hughes because they studied it that year. Or even various literary terms like foreshadowing, illusion, etc. You get the idea, right? And whatever topics they come up with, as long as they relate to what you studied in ELA class this year, they are totally fine and will work well with this game. So once you approve the topics, you will then give each team about 20 to 30 index cards. Now students should write down each word, title, or phrase at the top of each index card. Then students should strategize as a team to come up with five words or phrases that describe the topic that they don't want the other team to use as clues. So said another way, right? These would be the outlined words or phrases that can't be used, just like in Taboo. Now this is important because when they play the game, students will be switching index cards with the opposing team then each team will be taking turns giving their own team clues to help them try to guess a specific word. When one team is giving clues, the other team has to be super silent. It's very important, right? You don't wanna mess up uh, and give the other team information or whatever, right? Have them be silent. So you wanna pick obvious words that the opposing team can't use as their clues. So I wanna give you an example. If my team had come up with the title Esperanza Rising, the five outlawed words we might come up with and list on our index card would be something like Pam Munoz Ryan, book, Mexico, California, Miguel, because those words would be obvious clues that we wouldn't want the opposing team to use. Now, the beauty of students creating the topics and the outlawed words is that the game hasn't even started yet and they're already reviewing content from the year and strategizing over which words should be outlawed. And it's great because it's requiring them to just think a little bit more critically about the topics and analyze which words to include or not to include. Now, once teams have filled out all of their cards with the outlawed words, they will then hand them in to you. You will then choose a team and a clue giver to go first. The team will select a card from you and then you'll set the timer for one minute. The player will then give clues while their team calls out their guesses. If you've played Taboo, you're visualizing this in your mind. If you haven't, it's like the best game ever. Go play it with your family. So the clue giver may not use any of the outlawed words on the card or from the topic itself. So for example, if the answer is Esperanza Rising, the clue giver obviously can't say Esperanza or Rising. Now, if the clue giver uses any outlawed words from the card, the judge, which could be you or a student from the other team, will make a mental note of this and explain at the end of the minute why the team did not earn points for that card. You can also even use a buzzer like the game Taboo does to like buzz students if they say a word they're not supposed to. Totally up to you though. I love that because it makes it so much more competitive and that's just my in my competitive nature, but totally up to you how you decide to do it with your students. Now the player has one minute to get their team to guess as many correct cards as they possibly can. Then after that minute, the other team will go. They'll follow the same exact procedures going back and forth until you run out of cards and the team with the most number of points at the end is the winner. Now, if this game is a success, you can consider rinsing and repeating it with different categories on a different day. And if you do this a second time, 
The second time that students will apply is going to be so much more challenging because they most likely picked the more obvious ELA topics during that first round. We hope you and your students absolutely love this activity. And if you do, let us know in the comments section so that we know that you used it with your students.